Hunting in the coastal rainforest of Southeast Alaska is never what you'd call easy, but sometimes it's just especially brutal. I'm here this November with a gentleman named Evan Hafer, a former Green Beret and current CEO of Black Rifle Coffee Company. I'm just here to make coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> We're hoping that Evan can bag his first ever Sitka Blacktail deer, but nature may have other plans. I mean, it's a windy place, it's always damn windy, but I'm surprised we're not doing better. The nights are long, the days are short, wet, cold, and windy, and the deer are utterly elusive. This could get real frustrating. I've followed trails of all kinds, pursuing wild game through our country's wildest places. These are my stories. These are my people. <laughs> I'm Steven Ronello, and this is Meat Eater. What year did you get involved in the military? I joined when I was in college in 95 and joined the reserves. So what phase of it were you in on 9-11? I had just graduated the Special Forces Qualification course. So I was just a new Green Beret. I was in um, Louisiana and, um, on a training exercise. They pulled us out of this exercise. So it was like another 24 hours before we found out. But as soon as we saw it, we are like, no, we're going to war. I was there about 270 days a year from 2003 to 2009, give or take. Oh, really? Yeah. That many days there? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. That was my home. Yeah. What do you like better, the military business or the coffee business? I like the coffee business for this phase of my life. Oh. Uh -huh. I like the military business for the previous phase of my life. This is a little bit slower. Mm -hmm. Regular viewers might recognize this place instantly, our moldy hunting and fishing shack on Prince of Wales Island in Southeast Alaska. It's our own personal ass kicking station, a place to come out and ruin gear and learn hard lessons and get skunked now and then, and where you're more likely to have an infestation of mink than mice. It also, quite importantly to me, lies within the limited range of habitat for one of the most interesting and delectable of all North American deer species, the Sitka blacktail. Whenever I want to give someone a new and challenging experience, I bring them here to hunt blacktails because, chances are, they've never had the opportunity before. So when I met Evan Hafer at a National Wild Turkey Federation event, and he and I got to talking about doing some hunting someday, I considered his long experience as an elite commando and thought, I bet this is just the sort of guy who'd probably get a kick out of hunting in a place so wet and nasty, your fingertips get pruny just from walking through the woods. Evan is no stranger to trying new things out. While stationed in Iraq back in 2006, he got it into his head to try roasting a batch of his own coffee beans. Curiosity turned into passion, and upon returning stateside, Evan eventually formed the Black Rifle Coffee Company. With the goal of giving back to his military community, he extended employment opportunities to other veterans in order to help them transition from military life to entrepreneurship. Welcome to Alaska. I'll tell you two quick stats. 13 feet of rain, so it's like abnormally nice. Right. And a 25-foot tide swing. So not long from now, the end of this dock will be high and dry. Really? Yeah. <laughs> a really high tide like this, everything goes in the water. Right. So you got to be very careful about logs. It right. becomes hazardous boating. Right. I'm going to hook the water up, and then you can like get acclimated and wander around. And... I'm just here to make coffee, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's early November, which means the sun will be setting up here around 3.30 in the afternoon. There's hardly enough time to launch any kind of serious evening hunt. <laughs> a 
Besides, I want to get some shrimp pots in the water so we can start eating some shrimp at night and maybe even have a few bags of tails to bring home. So we're going to try a few different spots here. OK. Just kind of see where they're at. Yeah. And then if we find, we'll, we'll concentrate. Got it. Just bait the pots with some salmon heads that my buddy in town froze for me, and we're in business. Alaska spot prawns, or spot shrimp, are bountiful here, while also being a little bit unpredictable. Where you caught them last time isn't necessarily where you'll catch them this time, or rather, you won't catch as many as you caught last time. It's worth the effort, though. I've never bought or sold spot shrimp, so it doesn't actually really matter. But I always like to point out to people that the things were selling for $50 a pound the last time I looked. Over the next few days, we'll keep checking and resetting the pots whenever we get a minute. But for now, all they have to do is soak. The next morning it's overcast but calm, which means it's a good day to travel to some more distant hunting areas that might not be accessible when the winds are kicking up big swells. The boat takes us most of the way, and then we anchor it where it's clear of the rocks and not vulnerable to getting grounded by the dropping tide, then into shore on the canoe where the walking starts. So we're just going to work through areas that are like, it's very dense work along there's these kind of openings called musk eggs that just gives you some amount of visibility maybe like it could be 60 yards could be 100 yards right we'll stop and call <coughs> mostly like fawn bleats you can go out any time of year make a, a, a fawn bleat and bring in a doe it's pretty reliably right Now the does are carrying bucks. So like typically what happened would be a doe will come, but the buck that's courting her comes along. Right. But he's not like naturally interested. But now and then you'll fall and bleed and the buck will like see what's going on. But they don't, in and of themselves, you don't really see too often where they respond too aggressively, but sometimes does are very aggressive. Right. Come in. Okay. There's not a lot of deer. Right. It's just kind of slow, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. There's no herds. Right. It's onesies, twosies. It's like it's widely scattered. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot of them. Yeah, there's a lot of them, but it's not. Oh, there's a dozen. Got on it. the hillside. It's, 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 it can be like that, but typically down in the dang. You just can't see enough. And so we're, like, we're looking for like a deer. Got it. OK. Aside from a teeny bit of sign here and there, the day passes without incident. It's our first day though, so no cause for alarm. It's not that I didn't want to see a deer today, but I do want Evan to get the full experience. A slower day before we start shooting all kinds of bucks won't hurt anything. With that in mind, the next day I decide there's plenty of time to experiment a little. We motor to a spot paddle the canoe to shore, then lug the canoe way the hell into the forest where we'll start paddling again. I gotta admit to you, what we're doing right now is a little bit stupid, but I'm just kind of curious to go look around up there. But if someone said like, you have to kill a deer today, I wouldn't do this. <laughs> Evan seems to be a hiking and rain-tolerating machine, though unbeknownst to me, he has developed some opinions about the leadership. I think he tries to find the hardest route for, like, drama purposes or something. Because there's a trail, like, 10 feet away from us. It's crazy. He hasn't had any water since this morning, so I'm going to try to watch all day to see if he drinks any water, because I think he sneaks it 
Whenever he's looking, I think he like dips his hand in a creek or something. It's not humanly possible to do that, to go all day without water. At one point, it seems our experiment has paid off when we managed to call in our first doe. But she's flying solo. No bucks, follow her in. She's supposed to have a buck with her. <laughs> Eventually, the weather really turns on us with strong winds and driving rains. With all the movement and noise in the forest, it makes it seem impossible to detect the presence of an animal that already seems ghost-like in its ability to evade human detection. I mean, it's a windy place. It's always damn windy, but it's nice when it's clear. It's right. nice when it's calm and you know that you're at least projecting, you know? Right. So you like to hunt where there's more deer? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I like there to be a lot of deer. Better conditions. I like them to be very tame. Right. I like it to be very warm and sunny. Good t-shirt Yeah, very tr I want the deer to be very trusting. They want to come to me. I like to have something warm to eat. Right. Eventually, we call it quits on deer for the day and head over to pull our shrimp pots. As best I can tell, the crustaceans down under 60 fathoms of water never seem to get turned off by a bit of rain. Oh yeah, we got some. My next idea is to climb, which is usually my idea when a hunt isn't going well in mountainous terrain. They must be way up there is what I always think. Seriously though, it is worth a check. A lot of these deer absolutely like the high country in the summer and descend to the low country only slowly as the weather turns. Sadly, the day drags on with more and more of the same nothingness. Respect the hell out of you for not bringing it up, but uh, I'm surprised we're not doing better. <sighs> I don't want to like beat a dead horse, but I want to check a few more spots. We'll get out of here. I'm pulling your lead. So what if you want to do? Don't don't even think about it for a second. Just be like, let's go. Today, I can't blame the weather. No. I can't blame the time of year. All the shit I'd like to blame. I'd be like, ah, oh, it's too early, it's too late. Can't do that. Can't be like, ah, it's too windy. Too sunny? I'm 
must be it. Yeah, it, it wasn't was sunny earlier. So it's not that. <laughs> man, 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 man. Now we'll try something totally different tomorrow. Yeah. You could switch it all up tomorrow. You could drink water mm -hmm. four or five times. Just get all hydrated. And yeah, get super day. hydrated and see if that helps. It could. But I actually haven't <laughs> topped this off in a few days. <laughs> could eat all those shrimp. There's always shrimp cocktail. Our next to last day brings fog and increasing desperation. I get motivated to do something I've always wondered about trying, which is rattling. A noise meant to mimic the sounds of two bucks duking it out as they smack their antlers together. I've never personally met anyone who rattles for Sitka blacktails, though I can't think of any reason why it wouldn't work. But still no deer. You know what I think about is uh, when you're hiking all over hell and not getting anything, a lot of people just go hiking. That's true. They think that everything is going great. Yeah. They'd be like, oh man, that looked like an awesome walk. It's like everything went great. Mm -hmm. They would never know. Abject failure. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the benefit of hunting. So, you know, you're gonna win. It gives you a way to win and lose. Either way, yeah. On our final day, we see the worst weather yet right off the bat. It's hard to get excited about another day of hunting, but I commit myself to taking things slow and doing some long rattling sessions. After a few hours of hunting, I pretty much think I'm hallucinating when I see it, but damn, there is a buck creeping in. I keep doing what I'm doing, and he keeps quietly closing the distance. <sighs> Let's go check it out. It's a dead deer, boys. Oh, you got him? <laughs> Holy <laughs> That's a black tail. Yeah. That's not a small black tail. It's not? No, that's like a, I mean, they get much bigger, but that's, right. that's a pretty standard black tail. Wow. <laughs> man. Did, man. Thanks, brother. Dude. So good. I can't believe. <laughs> Down to the wire, boys. Did you plan that for dramatic effect? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, be honest with me. Were you frustrated this morning when you started to walk up here? Oh, yeah. Walking around today, I was thinking to myself, OK, if you just walk through the woods, yeah. like five days, I just you feel like, walking. how would it be that we wouldn't run into a deer? I know. <laughs> Back at the shack, 
Evan breaks out some green coffee beans in order to give them a proper roasting over our crab boiler. This original strain from Ethiopia, one of the finest coffee strains that I like. It's naturally processed, so it tastes a little bit different. It has a little bit sweeter taste to it, which I want for the rub. I think the frying pan roasted coffee tastes really good because it does pull in the total experience from what you've been doing. That's why I like doing it in these environments. With the coffee freshly roasted, Evan's gonna mix it together with some pink salt, brown sugar, and black pepper to make a dry rub for our black tail tenderloin. I think you'll find that these are mild like white tails. These deer just have a very mild, like easily approachable flavor. First though, a little seasonal treat as an appetizer. This time of year, you'll find the spot shrimp are often packed with roe or shrimp caviar. It's like a hundred little bubbles. It tastes like the ocean. Pop, 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 pop. It's good though, isn't it? Well, that's great. While Evan gets to work on collecting a pile of that, I throw the shrimp in a pot of boiling water just until they float to the surface and then you nab them out. And then for the coffee coated deer meat, a quick sear in butter. So these are gonna be rare. So try that, but remember mm -hmm. that he's barely dead. Sick of black tail loin, coffee rub. Yeah, it's delicious. Yeah. Most coffee rubs, it doesn't taste like coffee. No. That tastes like coffee. Mm -hmm. Very prominent coffee taste. Mm -hmm. That Southeast Alaska in a nutshell. I gotta admit, man, I was surprised what that turned into. The hunt. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna pick a calendar week. We pick the week. Right. And I was half thinking that we would get out there, walk around for four hours and have it be that we called in two, three bucks. Right. I mean, I, was, I could picture that happening. And after a couple of days, it's like, oh, it's been windy. Oh, it's been rainy. And then a perfect day and dead. Then I was like, man, you didn't bring it up, but I was sweating it. <laughs> like, I was like, wow, why can't we just pull it together? It was just, I feel like this is how we should be doing it. This is why we should be doing it. We're trying everything. Zero feedback. Mm -hmm. If we call and you just see a deer take off, you're like, okay, that's yeah. not working. Yeah, it makes it longer because you're operating in a void of information. Mm -hmm. And you are adjusting. Try way up high. Yeah. Try down, try on the beach, try on top of the mountain. Well, let's try rattling. <laughs> yeah, try rattling. Yeah. Because nothing else is working. Oh, well, it's good, man. It was fun. It was so much fun. Now, I wouldn't have it go any other way. No. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. It was difficult. So I was surprised in the difficulty. Not because hunting isn't difficult. It was just the terrain is tough. Yeah. I and mean, it's, not, it's not forgiving. The other thing I thought was as surprising is you have another gear. You've got your first gear, which is oh, which is just Normal, hunt, real stroll. slow. You got second gear, picking it up, we're gonna move to you know to our next location. You got third, really picking it up based on the terrain. And then fourth is, I've got terrain, I've got nothing in between me and somewhere else, I need to get there. Fourth gear is when you're on a hill like this and nothing interesting yeah, is gonna yeah. happen on that yeah, hill. Yeah. I don't like that. <laughs> you can't see anything. <laughs> I kept on looking at my heart rate yesterday when we were going up there, I was like, man, I hope he slows down a little bit. Just like a little bit. I'll say though, I never looked back to find that you weren't there and ready. <laughs>